Hey guys, what's happening? So, I thought I'd show you this new OS 18 CBR that I picked up on Amazon. Um, I think this is actually probably at the, the pinnacle, or the best .18 side exhaust that they ever made. Um, small lock. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's basically a 18 with a slide carburetor and a side exhaust. So it's sort of like an older style small block. Um, most of the small blocks went to a like rear exhaust. Um, but I needed this from my old Traxxas, Traxxas clone, uh, which actually has a side exhaust and a, um, it's not slide car, what is this called? I forget the name of it, but uh, the, car, the car that does this. So pick this up on eBay, 105 bucks. It's like 115 with shipping. So, I mean, it feels good so far. The compression looks pretty good. So let me show you the car. I'm going to put it in real fast. All right, so that's the car. So right, I'm currently running a HP 18 in there. And, uh, but yeah, I wanted to get the OS in there. So I thought it'd be cool with the blue and the blue. I mean, Nitros are definitely a pain in the ass compared to electric, but uh, to me, they're just way more fun. Uh, the cars just feel way better, you know. They just feel, they feel like more like a real car. So, um, one of the things I got to do is I got to, um, I have broken off the screw. I can't, it was just dirt, could just be dirt. Um, I'm gonna disassemble it, I'm gonna ultrasonic clean this whole thing. I mean, it feels pretty gummed up. Um, yeah, it, but it, the, it has, feels like it has pinched though, which is good, so. Plus the, the head, for me, the, one of the most important things for appearance uh, is the head. I wanted to find one with a clean head. And actually, some people online are selling these things for like six, seven hundred dollars on eBay, brand new ones. Uh, so they're not cheap, they're hard to find, you know, and. Um, I mean, they're very desirable engines, so. Um, Alright, so also it looks like there's some. Um, I can't tell, but it looks like. The, I don't know if it comes like that, but it looks like somebody had done some carb work on it. Like they uh, sort of ported the. Uh, the what's it called? The uh, Venturi. Well, it's not a removable Venturi, but it looks like they ported the Venturi here. So, alright, so I'm going to take the stand off, and get everything apart, and we'll take it apart and we'll take a look at the internals. Um, like I said, I don't know what's, I mean, this is considered basically a CVR, or the R is usually race. So we'll see if it actually has any crank work done. Well, I haven't been back in RCs that long, maybe a couple of years now, a year and a half. That's the first time I've seen a two-shoe clutch like that before. Usually I see more round, like your typical small block clutch, but I've never seen one that's spring-loaded like that in only two shoes. Normally I would see that on, on like a three-shoe clutch. All right, let's get those off. I don't know what engine this thing was originally off. It might have been off like one of those, uh, not Tamiya, but uh, a Team Associated. A lot of people put these on the on-road Team Associated. So yeah, that's kind of an interesting single speed, but it, I'm not used to seeing like when they have this extension on the front of it. All right, so I got to get this uh, crank, uh, the bell housing off. Not the bell housing, but the uh, flywheel off here. So I don't know if this is actually an SG crankshaft or an extension. I guess we'll find out. Uh, yeah, I made this. It's on my think Thingiverse page. If you have a vice, one of these Harbor Freight vices, this is probably 20 years old. But uh, it's like a protector thing, so you don't mar up metal. Okay. Curious. Ah, bummer. So it's a short shaft. I kind of like the SG crankshaft better, but. A couple things I use to get the flywheel off is I uh, have some car pullers. This one's like a power steering uh, pulley puller. I can't remember what this one is, but it's very similar. Same thing, it grabs and you, get it, and you can pull. So it goes like that around it. Alright, so my nitro collection is actually getting bigger and bigger. Um, it's kind of like an addiction. <laughs> Alright, so now i got to get the, uh, the rear. I'm actually not going to use the pull string. Uh, that just that, That's blisters waiting to happen right there. Um, I use actually like my drill, drill start. So take the back off, and there should be a one way bearing. Alright, so the one way bearing feels good. Alright, so anytime you're going to pull the back cover off, always make sure the piston's up. Because sometimes you can damage the piston. But one of the things, fun things about buying these nitro engines is seeing how they're made. Yeah, pull starts are totally no freaking bueno. Um, because they're, uh, they rob horsepower, but I'm kind of stuck with it um, with, uh, with the Traxxas. 
I mean, there's no place to put a bump box. Yeah, you can do. You can see it's pretty gummed up, but look at the crank. Crank looks polished. I mean, you can see a couple of cuts, so it's not like a totally stock crankshaft with no work done to it. But I'll, I'll bring it out and show it to you closer. Let me get the cooling head off here. So I'm guessing it's probably like a 2 millimeter M2. So let's get the head off. So at this point, I don't know if there's a separate head button or sometimes the actual the cooling head is actually is the head. Um, it looks like the cooling head actually is the head. Like on some of these things, you'll have a separate cooling button, cooling head button. I mean, this thing, I'm assuming this thing was probably 20 years old, 15, 20 years old. All right. Probably a couple shims on there. Okay, one shim. Looks like, uh, I may need to grab my little thing here. But the pinch feels good, though. All right. So I'm going to get a little zip tie in there to get the sleeve up. For newer nitro engines, I, I use this method a lot. I just use a zip tie because you don't want something that's metal that's going to screw up your sleeve. You want something plastic and soft. And I just crank the crankshaft. I mean, it's not really great for the rod, but, you know, you don't put too much pressure on it, you know, because you don't want to screw up your, your uh, rod bearing. And so here is the sleeve. And, I mean, it looks like there's, I mean, look at that. It's been smoothed out, so I don't know if it's been modified after the fact or if it came from the factory like this but it definitely looks like it's been smoothed yeah see that right there that's not like sharp it's not just like cut off a cnc you know there's somebody did some smoothing on it let's see if i can get the piston out here uh. all right oh. so the piston looks good I don't know if the guy had cleaned it. I mean, before last time he ran it, but it looks like super clean. I mean, the engine looks pretty new. I mean, it's not all thrashed, but yeah, I don't know if you guys even you guys like. Is this too much detail? <laughs> I don't know. All right. I mean, this is fun for me. That's why I'm doing it. All right. So here is the crankshaft. So because I've never actually had an 18 before, if any of you guys actually have this engine, I'd like to know if it came from the factory like this. I mean, it is a race, considered an R engine, but this thing is this thing has been polished. I mean, this thing's very smooth. All the surfaces are nice and polished. You know, equivalent to like say on a car engine, you'd be pouring the heads. Yeah, because you know, any sort of like uh, you, the smoother the better, the better the the better the airflow, and you don't want any sharp edges typically. It looks nice. This thing's probably gonna haul ass. All right, so I gotta get this thing in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So I gotta take the stand off, take the carb off. Um, cool, I'm actually glad the front bearing's open. You can see that down there. That I'm just gonna throw it in there with the bearings. Like if it had a seal, it was sealed on both sides, and I probably wouldn't want to put it in the water again. But I'm trying to get all the the, the gunk out of there, all the uh, gum. It's all gummed up. So that way I can get the water out and then uh, lube them up. Get the carb off. Right, so here is the carb. So if you look at it closely, I think there has been carb work done. You can see it's been smoothed out. So this thing is actually going to be probably pretty crazy. It might even break my drive shafts. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But I usually uh, ultrasonic clean the carburetor separate from the rest of the engine stuff. That way I don't get it mixed up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take it all apart and get everything out of there. Yeah, I think this thing might have been in a uh, team associated uh, NTC3. Um, I started doing some research, and because the engine mount is actually not metric, it's actually American. So that's definitely a cue off that it's actually an American car. Um, yeah, that the mount looks exactly the same as a uh, NTC3. All right. Alright, so a little cheap dip dish soap here. Put it right on the block. Right in there. Just kind of around. And on. So I'm going to let this go for maybe an hour, hour and a half. Until this whole thing is clean. Yeah, you can just see it coming right off the actual sleeve right there. I'm 
a little bit. You can just see it coming right off the engine there. All right, so I'm gonna use a little trifle a little bit, I'll up the bearings, get way down there deep in that first one. I don't know if you can see that. This bearing. Get that crank in there. Actually, I'm gonna lube up the crank too. I should be doing this with two hands. Okay. Yeah, because it's a short crank, it's harder to get through. Like if it's an SG crank, it's a lot easier to get down there. That's a nice crankshaft. They did some work to that thing. I don't think it came from a factory like that. I mean, I think it's so polished. So if you didn't pay attention to the first video, you typically the piston, when you see that little hole right there, that's the oiler. That's the rod bearing oiler. That usually faces the front direction. Plus you can see the piston's cut right there. That's actually crankshaft clearance, so when this thing's spinning around, it doesn't actually whack the bottom of that piston. Alright, get those, the key lined up. Okay, we're good. All the way down. Alright, so I got the... Uh, Crankshaft spinner, because I hate those designs. They just rob horsepower, but I really have no choice, so. So I gotta get to line up with that thing right there. I'll put it at the bottom. And I'll put the cover back on. What's a little crazy is that there's no seal in there. So, I mean, that could be a possible source of an air leak. There's nothing you can do about it, though, because it's sp spinning around. It's You can't put silicone on there. Alright, so we get the cooling head back on. Put the shim back on. Alright, so it's time to do the carburetor now. Got the engine back together. Hey guys, there we are. So yeah, I did actually look at a picture of a replacement crank, and it definitely doesn't look like it has, has to be worked on, like this crank does. So, that's kind of awesome. This thing's probably going to haul ass. But, uh, alright, cool. So my next couple upcoming videos, at least one of them, uh, I'm going to put that in my uh, Traxxas clone over there, and uh, get it going. So hopefully I don't break drive fast. We'll see. Alright, cool.